So I do a lot of coverage on my channel of early access games, indie games, alphas, betas. And the reason I do so is because I really love the model. I think early access in, in general on Steam, it's a mixed bag. You get some absolute stinkers, some horrific abominations, and you get some absolute gems like Risk of Rain and, and Bannerlord and Subnautica and, and Valheim, things of that nature. Today, we're going to be talking about one that shouldn't surprise you. It's a game that is an early access survival game by a Russian development studio that nobody knew anything about. And it was called, ironically, Population Zero, which has had zero population since two months after launch, which is extremely worrying, but not as worrying as the fact that it's still being sold on Steam to this day for $30 and the company doesn't exist anymore. As far as I can tell, they've shut down their website. They've not been on the Discord since, since literally July of 2020 and the game's still for sale but recently in the last couple of days they've shut down the servers so you can still log on steam buy the game for 30 dollars and then not even be able to boot up the game it just doesn't work because it is a persistent online game now i played population zero when it came out i gave the game an opportunity and typically when i do a review or like a, a first impression of a game i'll give the game five to ten hours even if it's quite bad because I feel like that's a fair amount of time to then give my opinion. I feel like five to ten hours in a game is enough to get to grips with the basic systems. The how's the optimization? How do you interact with the game? How does each system work? How does it deliver the game to you? How does it feel? You can get a pretty good read on it by then if you played a lot of games, which obviously a lot of us have. Population Zero was unfortunately one of the few games that I couldn't last even longer than an hour. I ended up getting a refund real quick, banging the video out and just saying do not back this game there is no future for it because the problems wasn't just tech the problems was the fact that the developers had done a bunch of shady things already such as leaving the game under a non-disclosure agreement until the day they dropped it for money uh, which of course then no one could warn you that the game was an absolute joke it was really badly made but it wasn't just things that could be improved like optimization even just the design of the game and the systems that they had in place just didn't make sense. It was supposed to be a survival MMO where you could play with your friends, but there was no friends list system. There was no way to actually join your friends unless you'd completed a bunch of different conditions. And the servers aged and died, basically. There were there were time-limited servers, which, if you're familiar with, with the survival genre, that typically tends to work. If you play Rust, uh, the servers get wiped every two weeks, roughly. And people enjoy this because the loop of beginning to end is really fun. But once you stagnate at the end game and people start building up a million resources, it becomes a problem. This game had that built in as a force, but it didn't have an engaging or fun gameplay loop. So it, it, you were just basically getting wiped on progress that wasn't fun to progress in. So it was a bad game. I gave my first impressions. I said the game was utter garbage, which I totally stand by. I, of course, said the game was going to fail. And then we're going to go on a side ta tangent right now, but I was met with the same stupid backwards logic that you get all the time as a content creator or anyone giving an opinion on, on a video game online, especially if the video game is not yet finished. Why are you criticizing this game? It's not done yet. Wait till it's finished before you start talking badly about it. Now, I'm not sure what Mickey Mouse world we live in here, if you hold that opinion, but... Just bear in mind that the the state of a game in alpha, beta, and early access means that that's when the most development is going to be done. So why would you wait until the game was finished and shipping to people when they can change much less of the game because everything's baked in together and relying on other aspects of the game? It, it all systemically works together and it's supposed to be done at that stage why would you wait until then to raise concerns and not when the stuff is supposed to be being changed and being given feedback on? It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you see it all the time. I've had it a couple of times this week. And the reason I bring this up is because not only did it remind me that now the game is completely dead, those people probably look a little bit silly for doing that, but because I covered Magic Legends recently and that game is another absolute stinker where if you, you know, put me in a cell and said, we're going to torture you. Which game would you like to play for the rest of your life? I'd struggle. Population Zero or Magic Legends, I'd really, really struggle to make a pick. So the reason I wanted to talk about this a little bit is just to say this company, 
I don't believe they ever intended to really do anything. They released an interview at one point talking about how they'd failed the expectations of their community, but they, they had a roadmap and they understood what went wrong and they overhyped the game by accident. And, you know, making a, a really good trailer was probably not the best idea. And getting people to expect that this was going to be an A-plus experience when it was just a very early access that wasn't ready for release yet. And then within like a month and a half of that interview, they stopped posting on Discord, they stopped posting on Twitter, they stopped posting on their forums, nothing got updated. But they've obviously left the game up on Steam for almost a year now where you can buy the game at full price and there's nobody playing the game and they've not been developing the game. They just lied to everybody, got a bunch of people to buy the game and then just completely vanished off the face of the earth. And this is apparently a company as well, by the way, that had like 50 to 200 employees according to LinkedIn, but they've just completely shut down their website there's no communication anywhere about this game when i looked up the game in like mid to late 2020 to see what was going on there was uh, screenshots and there was floating around and there was websites that had reviews for working with the game working with the company saying they're incompetent management are liars they don't pay people their salaries that they're supposed to they make promises and they mishandle all the finances so in general the company was just an absolute mess they never intended to de deliver on anything this is just another one of those projects where you look back at it and you just think, what did anyone really see in this? Why were people defending this game? It just goes to show literally anything that gets put out there. It can be really, really in your face obvious. We can look at Dreamworld recently. As someone who constantly advocates for things like early access and crowdfunding and Kickstarter, things like that, I really think it works. But the problem is, is that there's there's very little way to determine whether or not a development studio is just early on and they're going to really work at something and they're trustworthy or if they're just lying to you and they're just going to up and run off with whatever money gets made from the game or just totally abandon it without any any words said. And since we see this quite often these days, since it is a model that exists and apparently nobody is willing to take them to court and hold them responsible, it's something that's going to continue on and I think it's only going to get worse. So really the reason I wanted to talk about this is because, like I say, I do cover early access games on the channel all the time. I think they're a complete mixed bag, but like I say, I've had so much fun on them over the years. Sometimes even the janky ones that you know are not going to be, you know, a great game down the line have got such a fun, unique or interesting concept to them that they are worthwhile. But then you have games like Population Zero, which I'm not going to say it was a scam, I don't know how much effort, I can't read their mind on what they plan to do with it. But when you have people that are still playing your game, still asking, you know, guys, we've given you money. When's the next update going to be? When When is the roadmap? When are you going to deliver on this? You just totally cut off communication. These guys didn't even have the common decency to let people know, let these people know that had supported their dream, that had given them money to to continually develop this game. Guys, stop waiting. It's over. They didn't have the common decency to even do that. It's honestly scandalous, and I think we get net positive from Kickstarter, from early access games in general. But there is this really seedy underbelly to the to the medium, and I, I do think it is worth talking about, worth mentioning, because we still see, like, to me, this game, when I first played it, I was like, there's no redeeming qualities to this. Do not wait for this game. Don't bother with it. But some people have a different opinion, of course, and they do wait and they do put hopes in this and they do, you know, vehemently defend the game because they think, oh, you know, you're you're ruining any chances this game has to do well. Sometimes games just don't deserve to do well. Sometimes people behind games do not deserve for you to stick up for them. And as a consumer, you shouldn't be doing that anyway because they don't give a fuck about you. So, you know, it's not your dad. It's not your brother. It's not your company. Why are you going to bat for these people? It's really strange and it's something that you know you're doing the job for them as a consumer and you're the one being hurt for it so it's a really odd phenomenon that that you constantly see online nowadays a, a lot of fandoms are like this it's a big problem but just talking in general about projects like this we see now stuff like dream world which if you've not been following dream world it is one of the most blatantly obvious scams i've ever seen and the development of that story is going to keep going. It, it's like I said in the video, it's a rotten onion. It's layer by layer just falling apart. As soon as the Kickstarter ended, the guy who's in charge of it, Zach, went on holiday because apparently he was stressed from the Kickstarter campaign, which, you know, it's not a good look whatsoever. People are constantly coming forward to me with new information. Like, I know this guy's fiance. Um, apparently, he lied to her so often that when he kept telling her, I'm going to buy you a diamond ring... He did buy her a ring and then she went and got it tested and it was not a diamond ring. 
and that's who you're dealing with with stuff like this a lot of the times you're dealing with people that are morally bankrupt that don't care or you're dealing with people that are delusional people who really truly think that they have what it takes to be everyone else and and do the best things and and come up with the best ideas but they don't so yeah thought i'd just talk about it real quick get this off my mind so this has been population zero this has been a, a little bit of a side tangent a little bit of a rant about early access and crowdfunding i do think overall we are getting a net positive from the model but there's a lot of games out there now where you really do have to pay attention you really do have to look into it because they're just out there to get your money and it's not going to stop if anything i think this this gets worse if there's no regulation coming in if nobody's willing to take them to court hold them accountable they're just going to continue to do it and it's going to get worse and worse until something happens so yeah definitely be careful out there guys when you're buying games like this definitely this is one of those where you look at the trailer and you're like yeah looks really good but it's a lie the trailers like we can't trust trailers we haven't been able to for a long time even from AAA games and yeah so thank you very much for watching hopefully you stay safe out there i'll see you on the next one peace